There is currently a lot of discussion going on around the Lightning Network, cross-chain atomic swaps, and how there will be future of scaling and transacting. However, you may not realise it, but you've most definitely already used a Layer 2 network and probably not even noticed it because it's so subtle and seamless in its design and integration. In fact, there's not just one, there's many, and they're being used by millions of people daily. Those people are even using these Layer 2 networks to swap between chains and assets. The only difference between these networks and the Lightning Network is that they are run by one authority, whereas the Lightning Network is trustless, being run by users. If you haven't figured it out yet, I am referring to exchanges and services such as Coinbase and Bitstamp to name but a few. It may not be obvious, but it's true, and I think it's a good comparison to bring up, so the idea of Layer 2 networks are easier to understand. Let me show you. Lucy signs up to an exchange and purchases one Litecoin using some Bitcoin she has. She then decides to send half it to her friend Alex, who also uses that exchange. It is a pretty simple chain of events from a user's point of view, except it's what's actually happening below the surface that's far more interesting. So let's break it down. Lucy sends her Bitcoin to the exchange using a unique deposit address that they give her. This transaction is said to be on-chain, as it is recorded publicly on the blockchain, because the coins have to move from her own address to the exchanges. After her transaction is confirmed, the exchange credits her account. However, her coins are eventually moved elsewhere. You can see this for yourself if you have ever sent money to an exchange. They typically get sent to an address along with a whole bunch of other people's coins, just like a bank vault. So the coins move without Lucy knowing, but she still has her Bitcoin balance on the exchange. What's happening then? Well, Lucy's balance isn't dependent on where the coins actually are. The exchange has its own private ledger where it keeps track of who owns what in its vaults. This then is said to be off-chain and private between Lucy and the exchange. Now that Lucy is off-chain, if she makes a trade, say Bitcoin for Litecoin, only her and the exchange see the transaction. As all that's actually happening is the exchange is updating its private ledger to say she no longer can withdraw any Bitcoin from its vault, but she can withdraw one Litecoin. And likewise, when she sends some of that Litecoin to her friend Alex, who also uses the exchange, the ledger is once more privately updated to say Lucy can now only withdraw 0.5 Litecoin, but Alex can now withdraw 0.5 Litecoin from the vault. As this whole process is off-chain, no coins actually move, so there's no transaction fee or confirmation time, and Lucy can effectively trade and send as much as she wants, so long as she has enough funds in these vaults. When Lucy does finally decide to withdraw her funds from the exchange, it will be an on-chain transaction, from the exchange to her own privately owned address. This is effectively how a Layer 2 network operates. It is private, but relies on the decentralized Layer 1 blockchain as security and ultimate arbiter. Of course, a big weakness with these Layer 2 networks is that the coins are being held solely by the exchange, so they could always lie and decide not to credit Lucy her money, and she can't do anything about it, since when we actually go back to the blockchain, her coins are in the exchange's address. So it's currently a gentleman's agreement. The second issue is if the exchange is hacked, then just like a bank heist, Lucy's coins are going to be stolen as she is relying solely on the exchange to secure her coins on her behalf. The Lightning Network is different in that this vault is owned both by Lucy and the exchange, so one, the exchange can't lie about the balance, two, if it gets hacked, Lucy won't lose her coins, and three, each party can withdraw their own funds from this vault at any point, and neither can hold the other coins hostage. It is a really clever and beautiful solution to trustless Layer 2 networks. I've done a whole technical video on how exactly it works, which you can find here if you wish to learn more. However, I want to talk about it in this way because I think it is more approachable, and provides a greater insight into how the network will be used in the future. I know a few people had trouble understanding the technical video, so hopefully this provides a basic jumping off point. I think in the long term we will mostly be using Layer 2 to transact and trade, but not necessarily on the Lightning Network. 
Most new users tend to keep their funds in exchanges and crypto services as it's easier for them. Most of these services even have phone apps, insurance policies, and undoubtedly can offer a safer place to store coins than on a layman's computer. I predict these services are probably going to transition into full-on crypto banks, connected to each other so that their users can send money across them. Of course, so long as the blockchain is decentralized, we as users will always have the option of holding our own money and connecting to these banks through the Lightning Network, or directly on the blockchain. Or perhaps Apathy will get the best of us and we'll just find it easier and more straightforward to continue letting these services hold our coins for us. Let me know what you think below. I'm going to be talking later today at 10pm GMT on the Litecoin Discord channel about Layer 2 and Atomic Swaps, as well as answering some questions people have, so feel free to join me. You can ask questions on the Reddit thread or just drop on by and listen in. I will be recording the button up here if all goes well, so don't worry if you can't make it. And as always, until next time.